<clears throat> I see candles of green, red rose. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. What's going on, investors? My name is Emmanuel. And in this video, I'm going to share with you two important updates with regards to Tattoo Chef and with regards to Palantir. But before we dive into that, guys, can we please just appreciate the move Tattoo Chef is making today? Currently, we're up almost 8% on the day. Uh, Palantir is also doing extremely well today. We're up 3.5%. Uh, GoPro's up again. Um, AMD's up. We're looking very, very good. And I honestly believe this is post-tax day. So I was sharing with my Discord members over the weekend about tax day. And usually in the run-up to tax day, you know, the weeks or the months in the run-up to tax day, that there usually is a sell-off in a particular sector. Now, if you've been paying attention, the sell-off has been in high growth, mid to small caps with the likes of Tattoo Chef, the likes of Palantir. And typically after tax day, we see a massive bullish run within the weeks and the months preceding that. And now this is something I learned from reading Peter Lynch's book, Beating the Streets. And um, this today is day one post tax day because tax day was actually yesterday. And this is day one post tax day i mean this is incredible um again stocks that have been beaten down as a result you're going to start to see some massive bullish moves so it's essentially big money moving back in they've sold all the stocks that they need to sell to pay their taxes taxes have been paid off now they're going to focus on high growth companies that have been performing well however the stocks have been depressed so these are the prime targets and we're seeing big money moving in like into the likes of tattoo chef palantir and we're going to see in the likes of gopro as well so this is very good to see but this is not what this video is about let's dive into the updates so tattoo chef had two press releases this morning um and i like what management did here the first press release I guess you can probably class as negative or maybe slightly bearish because essentially they announced that they've completed the acquisition of New Mexico Food Distributors Inc. and Casting Tortilla uh, Factory, which we already knew. But this is the main piece of news, okay? As a result, they had to reclassify certain expenses, all right? So I'm going to skip all of this part right here and bring you down to the main bulk of this news article. So on May 12, 2021, the company issued a press release announcing results of the first for the first quarter 2021 now subsequent to the issuance of the press release the company determined that it should reclassify fulfillment costs from operating expenses to cost of goods sold during the first quarter now this is the part that you can probably regard as negative and let me show you what they had to do so essentially uh, they filed a recent 10q okay and if you look at our revenue our revenue stayed the same our revenue was 52 million dollars and our net loss remained the same eight million dollars there but the main difference was our operating expenses and the cost of goods okay so the cost of goods sold has now seen an increase to $45.9 million, which is quite a huge chunk. I mean, revenue was $52 million, and now the cost of revenue, essentially the cost of goods sold, was $45 million, and that had a huge impact on our gross profit, which left us with $6.7 million. Of course, the operating expenses saw a decrease because they've reclassified, or essentially they've reallocated that money into the cost of goods, which resulted in a loss from operations of $7 million. But like I said to you, the bottom line remained the same, and the top line also remained the same. No changes there. But you can kind of see how people might take this or regard this as a negative. Now, following up from from that the company said this adjustment does not impact the trajectory of the brand or the reported revenue net income adjusted EBITDA or cash balances okay nothing from that point of view has changed the net effect is an increase of 6.9 million dollars to the cost of goods sold which I've already showed you and a reduction of both operating expenses so again the money was reclassified or reallocated so we saw a reduction in the operating expenses but an increase in the cost of goods sold but the bulk of it nothing changed okay but we did see an impact on the gross profit like i showed you in the income statement and what we saw was pretty much our gross margins were reduced from 26 percent down to 12.9 percent in the first quarter the reclassification will be reflected in the form 10q filed today which they've already filed so essentially our gross margins uh, were now slashed in half 
because of this reclassification. Like I said, it's no big deal. In my opinion, it's no big deal. And this was reported at six o'clock ET. Now, one thing that this company did, and I love this management, and it's a sign that they care about shareholders and their investors, because literally two hours later, at 8 o'clock, they released this news. Tattoo Chef launches vegetable products in Whole Foods market stores nationwide. Literally two hours after the first initial press release. And I saw this exact same strategy employed with Celsius Holdings. They also had to make uh, an adjustment to the uh, financials. Um, but literally an hour after they made the adjustment, they came out with some great news. And the whole idea is that this great news will pretty much cloud uh, the uh, not so great news. And it's no longer that major of a deal. Okay, so Tattoo Chef did that. I appreciate management for doing that. And it shows they care about us, in my opinion. So Tattoo Chef, a leader in plant-based food today, announced it launched two of its original vegetable products in Whole Foods Market stores nation wide okay so that's the organic greens and the uh, zucchini spirals okay we got a statement here from sarah and she said whole foods has been a terrific partner since 2010 and we are excited to officially launch our branded products in their stores so up until this point they've pretty much been private labeling for whole foods but now they're taking on tattoo chef branded products which again is another positive sign makes me even all the more bullish and I absolutely love what management did there. Now, I've got some good news for Tattoo Chef shareholders in the UK. And it's this. We officially have another new product available in the UK. So up until now, in Costco's, you can get the organic greens. Uh, but we now have Mexican style street corn available in Costco's in the UK. And it ain't cheap, okay? It's £6.79. Damn, that's expensive. Um, but yeah. This is a good sign of expansion. It shows that they are expanding into Europe, into the UK especially, and uh, elsewhere. And this is very good to see from a high growth company. Like I said, they haven't even begun expansion elsewhere. They're still mainly focused in the US and they are dominating in the US. And slowly but surely, they'll begin to spread out into other countries like they're doing now in the UK. And we have our second official products now available in Costco stores in the UK. Now... Moving on to Palantir, and the main news was Stanley Druckenmiller, who people regard, well, some people regard him to be one of the best hedge fund managers of all time. Uh, again, it's arguable, it's debatable, uh, but essentially he did um, manage funds for George Soros. And I believe at the peak of his career, he managed about $12 billion in assets. So he's well respected on Wall Street, but right now he's only managing his own money and that's his family office. Okay. And they took on a new stake in Palantir of 5.89 million shares. Now let's take a look at the top 20 shareholders of Palantir. And as you can see here, Stanley's right there. And yeah, 5.98 million shares of the stock. It's a brand new position and it represents 3.59% of his family's holdings and again this is another bullish sign you've got jonathan soros here uh, from js capital management who also started a new position in palantir they picked up 934,000 shares and that represents 1.13 percent of their holdings and it's very good to see big money is moving into palantir whether you like it or not i reported last week that kevin o'leary they started a position in Palantir and you're starting to see other big players starting positions in Palantir. And as an existing shareholder of Palantir, this makes me even all the more bullish. Now, looking at the share price. Oh, Tattoo Chef is now at 8.6%. Amazing, amazing run. It's crazy. Uh, but with regards to Palantir, right now we are at key level of resistance, okay? We need to break through $21.59 to see continued upward movement. Uh, but up until now, it's still kind of flirting with that resistance level. Um, but again, this is just all short term. I'm in this for the long term. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this channel are also invested in Palantir for the long term. Um, but right now, my position is built. I want to say it again. If it does drop into the teens again, which I think is highly unlikely, of course, anything is possible. It only takes is your own power to talk about inflation. We, we might see the share price drop back into the teens. But I'm very, I'm a very simple investor. If if Palantir drops back into the teens, I'm buying more. It's really that simple. Okay. So yeah, that's all I have for you in this video today. If you are a Tattooed Chef shareholder or Palantir shareholders and you are buying the dips, I'm sure you're happy that you bought the dips now. Uh, make sure you smash that like button if you did. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more content from me. 
it's all good vibes on my channel here uh thank you so much for watching and hold on before i go is tattoo chef about to hit nine percent today wow we're at 8.9 percent it's crazy my name is emmanuel thank you so much for watching i appreciate the time and i'll catch you in the next one peace